What you gonna do when the brew crew comes down on you, brother? Nice, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's good. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. What's happening out there? Who is out there? Who's out there in the chat? Cowboy yeah. Jack Durango. Sound off. Jack Durango is the only one out Hello. there. <laughs> Just me. Oh, I'm, I'm here. here. I'm always Hi. here. <laughs> May not be on time, but I'm here. Yeah, hey, you are here. I'm on time. It's, it's all good. All good in the hood. Hey, in, yes, the whole show is in the chat. Uh, I, I appreciate. Hey, it. wow, we got, but we have an international. We have international. Yeah. There we go. Good night, mate. There we go. There's there Dutch heroes. Oh, geez, there they all go. Oh, here, hey now. Hey now. <laughs> Perfect, man. Please sound off, sound off loud and often. That's what we like. Yes, yes. So let's do it. Let's get into it. Let's not waste any more time. Welcome to the weekly Baseball Brew Crew podcast. We're keeping baseball history alive one craft beer at a time. Wherever you are watching or listening to us, please give us a like and a follow. And if you love beer with your baseball, please tell a friend. Here is the lineup card for today. Let's do it. By the way, let me make mention of this. Episode 155, um, Cowboy Jack Durango, I know that you're a math major, so 52 times 3 would be what? 52 times 3 is greater than 155, less than 157, I believe. 156, <laughs> Daddy. 156. Nicely done. Well, 52 yeah. weeks in a year, that means we have gone one week minus three years straight. So this is absolutely outstanding. Our next show will be our anniversary of going live. Uh, remember that? Remember the pandemic? Remember that? That was just around the corner. It's, you know, a couple of people. Apparently, it's school. over as of what next month? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just well, don't look up COVID net numbers. No. Nope. Right, let's, <laughs> let's not get into that, shall we? Well, th this show was born of that. Uh, Thank you, David, for joining. Yes, this show was born of the pandemic, and we have gone. We haven't stopped. We said, like, screw it. We're gonna come every week. We're gonna we're, have. We're weird. going to. We're going to at least the next pandemic. All right. Yes. <laughs> I'm not give you the Spanish flu, you know, polio, COVID. Come on. What do you got for me? Yes, big anniversary show next week, but we have a great show for you tonight. Here is a lineup card for today. In the leadoff spot is the Goodwill Ambassador and the Sultan of Swig at the Baseball Brew Crew. It is Cowboy Jack Durango with microphone in hand, of course. Hey, I've got friends in low places where the baseball drowns and the craft beer chases my blues away and I'll be okay. Yay, I'm not big on social graces. Think I'll slip on down to the oasis. So I've got friends in low places. Hey, it's me, boys and girls. It is Big Match Jack, Charlie Guzzle, the Hop King, the Goodwill Ambassador, Jackie Ballgame, the Sultan of Swig, John Cena's favorite beer and baseball podcaster the golden god none other than cowboy jack durango welcome to the show let him hear it yes wait 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 what was you that? got it john wait john cena what john cena's what john cena's favorite beer and baseball podcaster Oh, wow. Can add, Congratulations. Can How did that happen? <laughs> hey, you know what? He found me on social media, and now we're close personal friends, apparently. So, uh, <laughs> wow. What are you going to do? Well, you know what? Me, other people. <laughs> me, <laughs> me and, me and 50,000 other people, 500,000, 50, big numbers. Well, me and a lot of other people. But, hey, well, hey you, you, you show should... me anyone else out there in the Bruniverse that's buddies with John Cena on social media, and I'll buy you a beer ski. <laughs> I'll find someone then. Hey, um, so hey, since you know him, can can you maybe message him to be a subscriber to be a subscriber yes. to get to five hundred? Sure. Yeah. You know, sure. Worst thing will happen is I'll unfollow you. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's true. If if I could see him, I'll ask him. <laughs> Wow, what an intro. This might be the, the longest intro ever. 
<laughs> but good stuff. Kevin, you're always uh, batting second behind this guy. But hey, he's he's the table setter. And, uh, and of course, the bases are empty every time I bat after him. Ooh, so, ooh. you know. Bases are empty. <laughs> no, I'm saying because he hits a home run. I'm not saying because he strikes out. Come oh, on. Exactly. Of course not. Jeez. Of course not. He's our He's field coach and senior research analyst at the Baseball Brew Crew. It is Kevin Lyon. Kevin, how you doing tonight? Yes, sir. I'm doing wonderful. And hey, I, I forgot. We have a new one. Uh, I have something new to give Cowboy Jack. He doesn't have any enough nicknames, so I can't have a new one for him. Since he recently became friends with the people at Malibu Brewing, I want to call him instead of Malibu Ken, Malibu Jack. <laughs> Malibu Jack. I like it. I figured you would. I like that. I like that a lot. You don't have enough. You don't have Putting enough. Put it on the list, sir. Oh, don't <laughs> worry. I have a list. God. <laughs> we're never going to get out of these intros. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> My name is we'll Michael. Next week's show. <laughs> My name is Michael Mondragon. I'll be running the show and moderating comments. No, I won't. Uh, I, I, I'm going to be uh, drinking and talking baseball all night, right? Let's get to it. As always, the tradition is to bring a new and unique craft beer to review and enjoy. So what are you drinking tonight, guys? I'm going to start with Kevin. All right. So here we go. Um, so Brewery X is one of the biggest independent breweries in Anaheim. And last year they made an official Angels beer. It was, uh, I believe, Halo Lager. And if you go to Angel Stadium, if you go to their right field area, they actually took over a restaurant space that was previously used by like St. Archer and another brewery before that. And so now this year, this is their new one. It's the Brewery X and it's the Halo IPA. And I don't I do a little research too, because I was curious. They also have a Anaheim Ducks official IPA called the Quack. So I was wondering, my, is this just the same beer, just with a new label? And they're very similar, but at, at just different hops. This one, it, they're both 7% beers. And it says it's official fan beer. The Anime Angels is a West Coast IPA with Citra and Amarillo hops coming in 7%. And you know what? If I get an Angels beer, you know what? There's Dodgers beers everywhere. So let me get an Angels beer. <laughs> right, right. There's yeah, very a, few Angels beers out there. A lot of Dodger beers. but uh, Which is interesting because Anaheim is, is like the beer city for Orange County nowadays. There's something like... 30 breweries or so in the, in Anaheim itself. Yeah. Anaheim is packed full of alcoholics. Kevin, <laughs> yes. you live in Anaheim? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> well, we say beer enthusiasts here at the beer. <laughs> it's not like you're outing them or anything. It's, it's just been long known. So don't, right. don't worry. <laughs> yeah. If you're ever in Anaheim, dude, he's like the, uh, he's like the Mothman. You'll, he's a, he's a local legend. He's a cryptid. They're like, no, Kevin Lyon. People speak of him in hushed, reverent tones, dude. <laughs> I like to think of him as more as Otis in the Andy Griffith show where he just kind of <laughs> wanders in and puts it, takes the key off and puts himself in the cell. <laughs> uh, uh, but no, you're an enthusiast. Yeah. Kevin, you know, this, is a, this is a good, just a good clue, good, clear new West Coast IPA. One thing that surprised me out to do more research why I went to Angel Stadium last week. Uh, they have a little market section where you get cans like this to go. They did not have this, but they had the uh, the logger. So I was kind of surprised. So hopefully this will be at the park soon as well, if it's not already in another part of it. Yeah, that's another thing too. Um, I noticed that loggers are probably more popular uh, among like people that would just casually drink beer. So like I was surprised that this was an IPA. And well, um, and and honestly, you could find IPAs in the same area where I got the uh, the Halo Lager, and you know, because like literally right next to like a Stone Hazy and the Stone IPA, and I'm like, I don't think I have the Halo IPA. I'm like, no, oh, well, it's all right, right. right. Yeah, just sometimes missed opportunities, and uh, that's that's where we need to come down on these guys. Like, come on, man! Like, let's yeah. get this in the stadium. But, but again, I check one spot in other parts of the stadium. Like, I'm sure at their restaurant in right field, they probably have it on draft. I would assume. Well, that's where you, that's where your research skills are. Well, we need to tell people where these things are. Yeah, like, go to the right club level on right field yeah. on a weeknight. You may not even have to make a reservation uh, for bigger games. You might want to just look into it. And you know, we went there a few years ago, and it's a pretty good view from the right field yeah. uh, club yeah, level section. Beer was solid, food was all right. You know, can't complain. That's it. That's it. Good one, Kevin. Jack, you're up next. 
Gents, today I'm diving back into Arizona craft beers, and I'm talking about Craft 64, which is a popular brewery located right in the heart of Old Town, Scottsdale, Arizona, which, if you're familiar with it, it's where the party's going down in Scottsdale. They bring 10 signature beers to the party, all made from responsibly sourced local ingredients, once again proving that the great state of Arizona is a low-key powerhouse when it comes to the fine art of making craft beer. With these 10 unique beer skis on tap, Craft 64 is sure to be a fan favorite if you're like the Sultan of Swig and enjoy a high-quality brew ski with a unique twist. In addition to the beers, what, what modern-day brewery would be complete without delicious food? Craft 64 knocks it out of the park with their bruschettas and their signature wood-fire pizzas that utilize fresh, fresh mozzarella made in-house every day. Boys, you can't beat the fresh mozzarella. So... If you're in the neighborhood, if you're partying in an old town, I recommend swinging in, pl pl ah, downing some pizza, and throwing back eh, 16, 17 of their double play IPA. It's an 8% crushable beer that is, it has that strong IPA taste that we love here at the Baseball Brew Crew. And dare I say, it's as good of a craft double that you will find. Now, when you swing into Craft 64, don't forget to let them know that the Valley of the Sun's favorite son, Cowboy Jack Durango, sent you. Love it. Yeah, love that it. That pizza, I was like, oh, give, give, me, give me that pizza. Guys, give me some gourmet, all that. gourmet, gourmet pizza off yeah. the chain. Dude, when I go to Craft 64, I like to do what I like to call pizza roulette. I just point to the menu and get a new one every time. And it is always, always, always fantastic. And when you got super good craft beer, they also have a tropical hazy IPA that is mm -hmm. perfect. I, I, You can't go wrong at Craft 64. So if you're visiting Scottsdale, if you're visiting Phoenix, I've given a laundry list of uh, breweries at this point. But you've got to add Craft 64 to that list. Nice. And uh, you said it was in Old Town Scottsdale. Is it near the baseballism? Do you know where that is? Uh, you know what? I don't know where baseball is. This is a sin, right? I don't know where baseballism right. is. I've never, yeah, I've never visited I think, it. I think it's right in that area. Because if it's um, close to uh, Goldwater Brewing, uh, like the Scottsdale Stadium, it's maybe just a little south of where, and uh, the, the Scottsdale baseballism is right there. So if it's right there, I mean, that's, Perfect. Double play. Double play. Let you you uh, you give me three minutes to hashtag do the it, research. It thing. is uh, half a mile away. Half a mile. Okay, so yep. pretty close. Yeah, that Dumb. area is like cool to wander around and and just go to all the. Yeah, the baseballism the is on Brown Avenue and Crown Craft sixty four is on Main Street. There you go. I can't beat it. Love it. Love it. I, I love that you bring all these great Arizona places that I have no knowledge of. It's so fantastic. Craft 64. Any reason why it's Craft 64? I asked, though the waitress didn't know. And my I have a good, very good friend who lives close to there. And he actually turned me on to it because of the pizza. He's a big foodie. And he didn't know either. So it remains wow. a mystery. I guess I'll just have to go back and sample more beer. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Ah, good stuff. Thank you, Jack. So my beer is actually from uh, a couple weeks back. Uh, Kevin and I went to Las Vegas and we went to Beer Zombies. So I picked up this great one. It's called Zombie Duck Hunter. It is a 7.2 ABV. There was no IBU listed, but I'm pretty sure there's IBU in it. It's, it would probably be uh, pretty bitter, but um, I, I, when I taste it, I'll, I kind of measure out how how um how bitter it is but um it's not listed uh, there so that always throws me off because i'm just like i don't know what to, what to expect uh but it's a west coast ipa featuring mosaic talus simcoe idaho seven and citra hops uh chock full of bold hop aroma with a blast of hoppy bitterness all wrapped up with that classic pine and citrus that we love let me check this out real quick i Put it on the nose. I mean, this is uh, 
every West Coast IPA that we have out there that we love, Kevin, this is yes. it. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I believe I had this on draft when uh, one of us had on draft a couple weeks ago. It's like, and I just love the artwork. Like all their artwork for their cans is something like this. Very zombie, like horror related. And it's just like, oh, that's kind of fun. I, I, I was like trying to see, do you have the can? Because it's supposed to be like a duck hunt kind of thing. Like the old uh, yeah, Nintendo I mean, game. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to be able to sell yourself to get through. Oh, I'm curious so... what the side of the cans look like. Because I have it. Oh, 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 whoa, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is so cool, man. That yeah. Yeah, they always have man. really cool stuff. Yeah. And um, yeah, we went there. And I really wanted to go to this tap room just because of all the artwork and stuff like that. And this one that we went to is like a little tap room next to... Uh, what was a skinny fat? Skinny fat, it was, it was yeah. Skinny fat. A little restaurant that was good to eat too because we wanted to eat before we really got crazy for the night that continued. And I haven't been to any of the beer zombies yet, but they have two or three more locations in the Vegas area. That was just the closest one at the airport. Yeah, so we we had to check them all out, and and a lot of their beers, uh, we noticed that they also sell other beers, and like yes. one of them was called Bottle Logic. And if you're familiar with any of their beers. Uh, higher in in alcohol, um, and, but super uh, super yeah. bitter as well. And, hey, Anaheim, another Anaheim brewery. Another Anaheim one. They have a lot of barrel aged stuff, but they also have like a sours, and they're they're just a really super solid brewery. Super yeah. solid packaging, just like uh, zombie yep. oh, uh, beer yeah. zombies. So yeah, so definitely if you see this, check it out. This one's uh, out of Vegas, so I'm not sure of how far this will reach. Um, but I haven't seen it in California, but if I did, I'd pick it up immediately. So great stuff. So thank you guys for bringing all of that. Uh, let's have, uh, let's, 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 let's uh, cheers. Cheers to all you. Cheers to our, our, our great show tonight. Let me mention something from Ian's time out. He's like, you guys must have bottle logic. I don't even remember the last time one of us had bottle logic on the show. Yeah. We, 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 we've talked, we've talked about oh, it multiple times. Yeah. It. Oh yeah. yeah. But I don't remember the last time I had a ball logic on the show. So that tells me I gotta I gotta get on that and find something there to have. Right, the show. right. I'm trying to think of what, what we had and yeah, it, it's been a long time. It's, it's one of those it's one of those breweries out here that's like uh, we don't we we always seem to go everywhere but there. Because I mean, to, to explain, because uh, the island's a pretty big city. Where I live is like the downtown area. To get to where Bottle Logic is, it's like a 15 minute drive, like north. East, so it's a little out of my way, but in that area too, there's like four or five breweries within like a mile or two of each other. Right, so you can make a whole day of it if you really wanted to. But, yes. but again, I, I mean, I can go, I can walk to a couple of breweries in the time that I'm taking to drive up there. So that's usually why I don't do that because I'd rather be safe and walk when I can. Yeah, that's that's for sure. All right, so let's do. Oh, oh I wanted to make what, a this. <laughs> what is this? Oh my gosh, uh, I, I totally remiss uh, on that. So this is the this is from Beer Zombies. This is an awesome one. This is Zombie Mania. It's a triple IPA by, by Beer Zombies. And I, I wanted to make mention of this only because of the it's wrestling related. So can, I can, I, can I please do it? Please let me do it. Ready? Got it. It's Zombie Mania. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Sorry, Yikers, dude. A 10.5 percenter. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a I, nine night beer, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That looks aw what a cool can, man. I got. I have to find that one. That's that's some good stuff there. Yeah, I think it was from a year ago, so I'm not sure if okay. it's even still around. But I never even heard of it. That's definitely cool. worth looking up. Oh yeah, hashtag do the research. All right, so let's do it. This is this day in baseball history for April 18th. You guys ready? I'm ready for oh, yeah. this one, man. April 18th. 1899, John McGraw, who's 26, makes his debut as a major league manager when his Orioles enjoy a 5-3 to three victory over the Giants, a team he will later manage for 30 years. Muggsy, a 1937 Hall of Fame inductee, will finish his 33-year managerial career with a 2 a uh, see. 2,763 win and 1,948 record. Oh my God, I can't. That's like 4,700 games. Yeah. Um, winning 10 pennants and capturing three world championships. That is just crazy to, to even. But, but did you hear you said how old he is? What do you say? He was 26 and he was he managing started at 26. I and think he was never man. never happened again. That's never no. going to happen. You know what? I, 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 I will disagree with that. 
I will disagree with that only because I've been seeing a lot of um, 30 year olds and I was surprised at that. Are you like, saying at the major league level or are you saying league. minor league or okay. Oh, okay. like my, yeah. Like there's some minor league uh, yeah. ones. So it, it could happen, but I, I can't imagine a, someone who's not playing like, you know, like, I don't know. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of, they'll ever be a player manager again. I mean, the last one I think was Pete Rose. I don't know if they're ever going to go back to that again. Yeah. It's, 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 <clears throat> it's interesting. I, I, I want to say that it, I, I don't want to say it won't happen, yeah. but it, it's you're right. I, I your your automatic tendency is to think that that someone will be older. But I've been yeah. seeing managers getting a lot younger recently, and it's been happening in football a lot. There's a yeah. lot of young football coaches now, yeah. so um, I think that it, I think that it can happen. And um, boy, I, can you imagine that? I don't, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon because mm. you still have a lot of the you still have like a lot of coaches who are like been around forever. You know, you got, you're, I mean, straight. Dave Rob, you know, you got like. All these guys managing for years with different teams. I'm like, I don't even know who would be the youngest manager in baseball right now. In fact, you know, it would probably be someone in their 30s. Maybe. Well, remember we, we, we were saying before that, um, like, managing without any playing career. Yeah. There's a lot right. of – oh, yeah. they didn't even have, like, even minor league experience. Yeah, I right. Think, to think of who – there was somebody recently that, that had that. Um, but, yeah, it's like uh, – Gosh, it's escaping me exactly. So, so the youngest manager right now in MLB is Oliver Marmol of, of yeah, the okay. Cardinals. I, I was and thinking he's, the Cardinals, he's, right? He's thirty-six. Thirty-six. I mean, yeah. that and that's that's super young in in yeah. uh, managerial terms. Yep. So and um and how about this? It's a, so I guess um what I'm looking at here is the young the youngest manager that I can find like in the modern era, baseball after 1900 was. Lou Boudreau, who ends up being a Hall of Famer, player manager at the age of 24. Okay. Huh. There you so, go. That in 1942. But again, that's 1942 when a lot of players would have been in it serving, starting to serve in World War II. So that yeah. makes a difference. Gotcha. That, that, that's a good point. Cool. Good Guys, ex- explain to me why we couldn't have a player manager in today's MLB. So it, uh, I would think that they wouldn't want to split that responsibility because there's a lot of analytics now and there's not really that, that need for the manager. I don't know. This is an interesting question. Another thing would be just the contract issue. Like that. I mean, how do you do that? Do you pay him like one salary as a player, one a separate check for the manager? Because I don't do managers fall in like the players union or is it something separate? I mean, that's a good question to think about. Who knows how that's, the contract structure That's works, interesting as well. You know, and, a lot and, definitely has changed since Pete Rose was player manager in, in the mid eighties. You know? Yeah, And if you think like Otani is, is doing it and he like, yeah. the, I, don't, I, I don't know if there's any, like he has to play so many games as, as a pitcher and so many yeah. games as a, as a hitter. So like, that's a very interesting question. Yeah. There's no, there's really no, and in the way that things are evolving, there's really, there's no precedence anymore for yeah. anything. It, it could be, you know, they could come up with it right away. I was just watching a video today where like stolen bases were up and I was like, um, we were making this case in fantasy. There's a fantasy league that Kevin's in and you only get one point for a stolen base. And I'm just like, wow, that's like just one. I was like, stolen bases are so rare. They should be worth more. And actually, this year, um, stolen bases are up. So, well, and I didn't get a chance to read into it, but I saw something about there's talk they might just do like pinch runners. You yes. know, you might go just, yes. yeah, like the way they're going to up the pinch runner thing, like official pinch runners. And now it's like, okay, well, does that mean you're going to hire a guy who's a like a fastball player, a track athlete who is insanely fast just to literally be a runner? Because I think yeah. we talked about that. That was the thing that uh, the A's did in the 70s. And I can't remember the guy's name. Washington was his last name, right? Uh, Herb Washington. Herb Washington. There you go. Yeah. He was like an official pinch runner. Yes. <laughs> That's all he yeah. did. Yep. You know? And he got picked off in the uh, World Series. Yeah. And uh, Way to go, Herb. <laughs> That's the thing that that's the thing I saw come up today. It's like you have players who are struggling who are like just on the cusp of getting there and all of a sudden you're not going to make it because they're going to have a pinch runner come in. That's kind of, that's kind of garbage, <laughs> you know, but, but it's interesting that that, that, if that could happen there, you know, they're at least looking to try to help change baseball. Cause you know, they, they think they're going to try to improve it and just, 
The beat is going to air on that one, no matter what we say, you know? Yes. Um, actually, he, um, he didn't. He actually got picked off first. And actually, they were mad. At, the, the players didn't like him because he was actually taking up a roster spot. Yeah, that. exactly. What I'm saying could happen now yeah, if they actually exactly. do that. You know? Dude, taking up a, taking up some some paydays for some players. Dude. Exactly. That's yep. not cool. Exactly. And he wasn't seen as a player. Sure. Yeah. All right. This is a very interesting one uh, for a couple of reasons. April 18th, 1923, Yankee Stadium opens in front of over 72,000 fans with Babe Ruth hitting the park's first home run, a two-run homer off Red Sox hurler Howard Emke, which helps uh, beat Boston 4-1. to one. The new $2.5 million ballpark is the first to feature three decks. Jack, yes, what sir. is this park better known as oh this park right here yes uh, it's the the uh the horseshoe center is the <laughs> that, that, colloquially colloquially is what it was called was the horseshoe center <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> you may have heard this one it is the house that ruth built ah uh, well that because... was that, that was what, what i was gonna say next <laughs> Yes, yes. And, okay, so this literally, this is a last-minute addition um, to this uh, this day in baseball. My friend Emilio is at this game right now. No. And he's at the Eagles. Oh, he's at the Yankees. Yeah. Oh. And so uh, he got the, um, the, the ticket for it, oh. the commemorative ticket. And it, wow. I'm like, oh my, like I knew that he was going to be there tonight. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't even think about that. He's going to be on there on the, literally the hundredth anniversary. Ah, so cool. So he gets there and he's, uh, he goes out to center field and he got a, it's like a pinstripe beer. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Oh, I'll, right. I'll, I'll post it on our social media. Hey, but, you know what? I can go shenanigans. This is, that's not Yankee stadium. It is, and technically it isn't. It's the second. It's the reveal. But, but, but he says like, "Oh yeah, and I, I, I got here, and I, Otani has already hit a home run, and it's like he wow. hit a home run in the top yeah. of the first. So, yeah. uh, so that I mean, how awesome! He, he literally like landed at like four o'clock, and then went straight to Yankee Stadium. Holy and that sounds like something we would do for sure. Hundred percent. Yeah. Cheers, to Emilio. Hundred percent. The there. Yeah, very cool. Little little last minute edition right there. I thought I'd add that. That's in. fantastic. Wow. Could you jump back to that stadium picture? Do you see the advertisement for Tidal? Mm -hmm. That is a narcotic pain reliever. Wow. But in wow. 1923, it was an over the counter. Like, oh yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love those. <laughs> It was great. God bless America. Dude. <laughs> you know, it wasn't it wasn't always easy to get drinks in the 1920s, so it was good to get some Tidal because we had prohibition going on around that time. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, Kevin, you were there. Have you tried? Yeah, I'm saying you hey. gotta find an alternative. You know, feeling good. <laughs> the struggle is real. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, and I, and I, now, do we know when this photo was taken, Michael? Because I I like that uh, Ian mentioned. Imagine being able to park that close. <laughs> you oh, know, I was like, exactly. I wonder what this is taken <laughs> exactly yeah I, I would say it's i mean it was i think it's 1923 this would be yeah i just i can't tell like those those cars i don't know what i can't really yeah tell those what, cars look maybe in the 50s are. yeah oh maybe maybe it is maybe it is later I, I, but still I, it's it still is just like oh my gosh you can't park that close yet you, you can't buy park that'd be like 150 dollars to park that close to the stadium that's nowadays true. that's true that's awesome April 18th, 1952. This this one is full of stadiums. Yeah. On opening day in Brooklyn, Willie Mays is knocked unconscious when he smashes into the Ebbets Field wall after chasing pinch hitter Bob Morgan's seventh inning, two out, bases loaded, line drive into the gap in left field. All three Dodger base runners cross the plate but do not score when the motionless giant center fielder comes to his feet and jogs into the dugout, apparently unhurt, having held onto the ball after making a fantastic catch for the third out to end the inning. Wow, what a favor. What, <laughs> dude, what an athlete, dude. He is awesome. That is all man right there. Man, and he's young. He He's only in his second year in baseball, too, at this point. So that I don't is know. You know, man, that say, is hey. awesome. 
Whew. And and I and I, I would think they pad they've had padding there because in the forties, um, Jack and I in our past talked about a guy named Pete Riser, who literally he's the reason why they started they added they added padding to the walls. It used to be just brick walls, and this is a dude who literally like knocked himself unconscious multiple times, con, you know, concussed, hospital visits, like literally like bleeding from like internally from you know from right. Hurt himself just trying to get the ball. It's like, man, these guys are crazy. Yeah, they started. They started making big adjustments to try to protect the players. But yeah, as they oh, should. Oh, I mean, geez. yeah, they absolutely. Yeah. So we went from Yankee Stadium. We went to Ebbets Field. Field. Yes. Now, now we, we're going to go to another fun one. <laughs> so this is April eighteenth, nineteen eighty one, in an international league action at McCoy Stadium. The Pawtucket Red Sox and Rochester Red Wings begin the longest professional game ever played. At 4.07 a.m., the league suspends the 32-inning contest, knotted at 2-2, being completed later in the season with the Red Sox scoring the winning run in the 33rd inning. Now, I'm sorry, 32 innings. 32 <laughs> Yes. They they suspended it at wow at thirty two. Did they stop selling beer? That <laughs> <laughs> is not not said, but uh, I I imagine so. Um, but Kevin, I want I want you to show uh, your yeah, yeah. shirt. This is the no. shirt that I got him uh, when I went Hopefully to McCoy's the studio. Lights. There you go. The longest game. Oh, one second. Longest game. There it is. Wow. See, it says, what, what's the second? Date? Date? See? June twenty third. June twenty third. Yeah, they there finished it on June twenty third. Yeah. A three, a game with three dates. Yep, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, isn't and, that nuts? And that's the Pawtucket Red Sox. Yeah, yes. and unfortunately, they no longer exist. They moved to Worcester. Oh, that's yeah. too they, bad. They built a man. new stadium, um, and they're called the Worcester Woo Sox. And yeah. uh, but uh, this. When I when I went to the stadium, this isn't my my picture, but they had this. This is the longest game in history. You could read all about it. It was it was super cool, and it was a super old, like crusty stadium. And and on this next picture, oh, you can definitely see it was an <laughs> old ballpark. And this oh, was yeah, before, this was before it was renovated. <laughs> yes, I love it, man. Yeah, but also it's, now, do you have notes who played in that game? Because we had we had some big 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 stars in that game, right? Uh, Wade that? Boggs. Yeah, wait. Was uh, that Wade Boggs in the photo? I don't know if that no, was Wade Boggs wasn't. or not. It wasn't. Okay. It wasn't. No, Wade Boggs is not that sassy and fabulous. <laughs> no, okay. He might have been at a young age. I just saw the stash. But Wade Boggs <laughs> was playing for Paul Tuckett and uh, what's that guy? Gosh, on the rails, uh, Carl, Carl, Carl uh, Ripon. What's his name? <laughs> Billy uh, Ripken. Slippy. That's it, right? Billy it's Ripken. Billy Ripken. No, no, Billy no, Ripken. No, 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 Cal Ripken Jr. Jr. I'm kidding. Cal Ripken Jr. Yes. The yes, the boss. Yes, the boss. <laughs> uh, oh, but man. yeah, I, I, there's actually an entire book written on that game, and I, and yeah. I saw it in my library, and I got to actually sit down and, and just check it out and read it. Yeah, it but I, I bought that shirt uh, for Kevin at, at there yeah. when I when I went there. I saw I actually saw uh, Lucas Giolito was pitching for uh, the Syracuse Chiefs, I believe. Go oh, right on. Yeah, he pitched like a two hitter against the Pawtucket. Who Pawtucket at that time had. Um, Oh gosh, um, spacing his name. He was on the Cardinals, and and uh, gosh, um, I'm totally spacing his name. I'm gonna look like an idiot. Um, right. He's like a World Series hero for the, for, for the Cardinals, and uh, and not David Freeze. That's he the had first fallen from grace, there. and he was striking out for the Pawtucket at that time. I'll remember his wow. name at some point tonight. Um, that is a that is a structurally unsound stadium, <laughs> by the way, guys. I, I, I'm noticing some things in those pictures that I would not be comfortable sitting there. <laughs> and mind you, because so that's born in the USA, that means this has got to be taken in like 85, 86, most likely. Yeah. For the and if you notice, like the, the dugouts are like facing, the way that they're facing is, uh, it's almost like Oakland, but it's like, yeah. it's even worse. I think it's like, <laughs> the craziest thing. And what people would do is, because it, it was like a bowl, they, they uh, people would, take a string and they would they would uh tie uh like a piece of paper that they wanted the guys to sign and a yeah. pen to it yeah. so they would just dr drop it down like a fishing line and then the guy was would, would, like sign it down there Jeez, yeah it was pretty brilliant. cool it was super that's cool brilliant oh what a cool thing man 
Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny that you say that. Did uh, they, they did have color photography, but um, <laughs> trust me when I say this looks more dramatic. Uh, this actually looks better than probably the color photo for some reason. I don't, I don't know. Like the, the photos we see like in the 60s and 70s nice. are like amazing. What's I'm that? just trying to see the sponsor. I was trying to look at the sponsor too. Does he have any like title or anything like that? I always see the Dodge. No, I see corner. Dodge, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like for some reason photography went out the window in the 80s. I think it was uh like this, uh, what do you call it? those disposable cameras that everybody had? It was like this yeah. took down photography. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> April 18th, 1982. Now I bring this up for significant reasons and I and see if you can understand why I bring this up. Joe Torrey's Braves set a National League record when they win their 11th straight game to start the season, beating Houston at the Astrodome 6-5. to five. The eventual NL champ, uh, West Division champs, who will finish the campaign with an 89-73 and 73 record, will extend the mark to 13-0 and 0 when they add two more victories against Cincinnati at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Why do I bring this up? Because the Tampa Bay Rays almost uh, reached that this this year. Well, they made they made thirteen. They made the thirteen, right? They didn't make it, but they didn't beat the record. They didn't beat the record. Uh, do you know the record? Is it, is it the- I, I actually I actually don't know. <laughs> oh, I, <know. laughs> I was also thinking like I remember the '84 Tigers got off to like an insane start too. You know, but they it's got funny off, because because I'm looking here. T- they got, uh, that was 84. They got up to a 35 and five start. Something insane like wow. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, wow. but it's weird because I remember like the Braves a few years later, they were just the, the dirt worst. They were bad. Yeah. They were a bad team in those mid to late age. We made it so sad because Dale Burke is such an amazing player. And this is their peak. And then they just shot along until they got in the right place, right time in, the, in 1991, getting that young talent in there, you know? That's right. That's right. That's why I brought that up. But I, I yeah. wanted to know the all-time record. I actually, I don't I'm, know. I, I'm trying. That's going to be, be. All right. While you look that up, I'm going to do this. Yeah. That's going to be starting history. All right. This is Kansas City T Bones, dude. Okay. April. Uh, I mean, it's the modern record. It's 13. Oh, so, okay. So then, yeah. then there you go. It says so the modern tried. record's 13. So it looks like the Braves uh, did it in 87. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Braves in 82. The Brewers in 87. And the A's in 81. Interesting. Oh, interesting. I didn't know yeah. that. Okay. Very cool. So you guys are going to like this one to finish this yes. out. This is fun. Oh, yeah. What the heck is the team? This is, cr- this is crazy. <laughs> when I, and, and it has a, a weird ending to it, too. You're good. April 18th, 2008, the Kansas City T-Bones, a minor league team in the independent Northern League, mm-hmm. cancel the, are you ready for this, Michael Vick, Welcome to Neighborhood Night. After receiving numerous complaints about the promotion, the plans for the event included the teams wearing black and white striped jerseys and an orange jumpsuit style uniforms to mock the former Falcons quarterback who is serving a 23-month sentence in nearby Leavenworth Prison after pleading guilty to federal charges relating to dog fighting. What? <laughs> this is, dude, this is 2008. 2008. Yeah. It was yeah. a different time, guys. It was a different time. Holy cow. What? So is- they're going to do it. And from pressure, they backed off of this idea. Can you imagine? That's wow. the only thing it took is public pressure. <laughs> wow. That's, wow. That's, oh my gosh. That's crazy. Okay. Are you ready for the other side of this? Oh, okay. Unbelievable. <laughs> So, so recently, if you follow the Savannah bananas, they're, they're on their kind of like world tour. Um, and they're, they actually had a challenge from a team called the Kansas city Monarchs. Mm -hmm. Can, would you believe that the Kansas city T-bones are the Kansas city Monarchs? Yes. Oh, that's, oh, I love it. That's fantastic. That's the team that became the the Monarchs is the T-bones. Yeah, so they wow. so get, yeah, so they got the rights to the name, I guess, in the last uh, yes. fifteen years. Right on. Yes, and so they they play as the Kansas City Monarchs. The the right. uh, for those who don't know, the Kansas City Monarchs were actually a Negro League team. So mm-hmm. they basically uh, took. Uh, I, I don't know if they took it, but they they, they probably they probably just bought the rights, rights to it. it. Yeah, sure. and they they play as the Kansas City Monarchs, and they've actually played the Savannah Bananas. Yeah. 
uh, because a challenge yeah. series. Yep. Because also the uh, the Negro League Hall of Fame is also in Kansas City. In Kansas City as well. Yeah. So, so that's that, a good publicity for all that all around, you know. Yeah. Boy, what a, what a sorted pass! Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, can you believe it? Who, who thought that was a good idea? <laughs> like, like that, uh, that, that was I in I got, charge? I, I got, was I, I in it. charge? That sounds like something I would come up with. I, all right, I gotta look something up. I think I can remember all this. My, all right, let's talk about things that a, a dumb idea that didn't happen. Michael, do you remember the Orem Owls idea for a publicity night oh, a few years oh, ago? Oh, oh, I do. Oh, I do. I do oh, yes. Okay. Oh, here it is. All right. Let me hope I can find this. All right. Yeah, here we go. This is 2015. All right. There's a team called the Orem Owls. They were like a rookie league team of the Angels. So, <laughs> Orem, Utah. They were going to do – are you ready for this, Jack? I swear this is real. Ready. They were going to do a Caucasian Heritage Night. What? <laughs> I'm serious. Yes. I'm yes. serious. Stop. It was on the schedule of Caucasian Heritage Night. It says it was going to be a Wonder Bread on Burgers with Mayo, a jumping contest, and a group watching of friends. Jeez yes. Louise. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and needless to say, um, yeah, it got that. So what? It, this was in what, 1982, 83? No, this is not. This, no, 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 no. Do you, do you hear where I said this was going to happen? Should I repeat when was the year? It? Yes, this give me the year one more. 2015. This is yep. going to happen. Wow. Wow. Yes. Yeah. And, Just... and uh, yeah. Yeah. It was supposed to be a lighthearted, it was supposed to be like a lighthearted event. And yeah. People, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Social media, good times. yeah, they got they def, they understandably got lit up, you know. So I was like, good, eh. yeah, good for them. Was like, uh, I think it was like the Charleston shooting happened around that time that caused yes. all massive heat, There's massive heat everywhere. And it's not that that's a good idea, anyway, honestly. <laughs> like, I read, good. I heard about it that time, and we just started laughing about the way this is real, and I'm like, okay, Jeez, no wonder it got weird. canceled. Yeah. yeah, was was Good Rob stuff. Black the promoter, dude? Was that an <laughs> XPW I, I affiliate? That. that sounds I, that sounds terrible. Oh boy! And there were pe- there are people in this article like defending it. You know, just like oh, get out of here! Come on, jeez. <sighs> ah, so that's this day. Wake in baseball. up, white people! Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> So this is Sorry, a man. segment that we've done now for three straight weeks. It is hopping around, and uh, this time it's me and Kevin. Uh, we were actually out in San Bernardino, San Bernardino, um, San Bernardino. Or, uh, watching uh, watching baseball, getting some craft beer. We also made a couple other stops. Kevin, I'm just gonna flip around and and uh, you can talk, and then I'll jump in whenever you don't. All right. Well, more or less, it was gonna just be Michael wanted to go to a game in San Bernardino, so I'm like, all right, well, let's go to the spots and just see what we get into. So this place is actually on on a, a, an old school like sausage like German restaurant, and that is actually what it looks like. Gazzolos, we got like good sausage with sauerkraut, and uh, there you go. There's our sausages with sauerkraut and German potato salad and some German beers. Like, oh, great way to start the day. And it was beautiful out there. You know, just we just needed to get some food just to fuel us through the day. You know, Michael, you enjoyed uh, what you had there, right? Oh yeah, it, it's uh, we've we've been there before. We went there as a uh, before like the uh, it was like an all star game, all- yeah, California all star yeah. game, yeah. Yeah. California all star game. Not, but not so believe it or not, not, but this is yes. I was just gonna say Good nothing job. like Michael, Michael and Kevin starting their day off with beer and wieners. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there you go. Good job, exactly. guys. Good job. Oh, the mustard. Yeah. Don't worry. The mustard was on the side. That we had, we had mustard on the side. Don't worry. But sorry, it was not. Oh yeah, 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 we did. We did. We had uh, the spicy and regular mustard. Yes. So we, we yes. and those were yeah, those, those good solid stuff. And those sauces are made in house too. So yeah. what this is, believe it or not, this is the site of the very first McDonald's. Uh, in, and it was created in San Bernardino you know, in the like the late 1940s, and so on the original site, someone a long time ago decided to make it a McDonald's museum, and there's a local like chicken chain called Juan Pollo that more or less took it over and runs it. It's free. You go inside, and they have par- like yeah, aisles and aisles of just various McDonald's paraphernalia, not from America, but just all over the world. 
you know, if you're out in San Bernardino, it's free to take a quick hour to walk around and there's so much fun stuff and just no matter how old you are, even, even my age in my, you know, three hundreds, is that where we are? Am that where I'm at this week? Sure. Sure. Why not? <laughs> I'll find something. I can appreciate it. Young and old, you'll find something to appreciate in here. You know, was there any, did you have any, was there any baseball stuff you saw in there, Michael? Did you get any photos, anything baseball related? Not really. Um, right? there, there was, there was a couple of things, but not, nothing really of significance, but, not, um, no. But the, but the thing that we did do next is like we were actually on our way uh, some, we were actually on our way to Hangar 24 right yes. after this, which is a brewery. And, and Kevin goes, oh, I, Fiscalini Field is right here. Um, and let's go. We should just go check it out and just and I had never been there before. I had heard of it and I had never been there. And um, there was a double header. They, uh, they were I'll, rained I'll, out yeah. earlier in the week. And there was a college uh, double header that was there. And so we decided to stop in and actually watch a little bit of double header. And, but this, this field actually has a bigger significance uh, kind of in baseball history. And Kevin, uh, tell us more about that. So uh, this used to be the home of a team called the San Bernardino Spirit before the, the newer stadium in San Bernardino. And it's best known because in 1988, in this field, Ken Griffey Jr. played. There you go. Oh, as that is down, oh, that's even better. So yeah, there's Ken Griffey in the spirit jersey. My gosh, I don't know. He looks like he was like what 19 or something like that. I don't know how old he would have been. Because I think he got drafted right out of high school, if I remember right. He would right. play 87 in uh, Bellingham, Washington. Then he played the 88 season with San Bernardino. And this is single A ball, and then boom, 1989. He's right there in the mirrors, and the rest is history, as they say. But yeah, I love that so they, that his dad is there and hanging out. That's really nice. Yeah, That's so cool you picture. see this, you see the scoreboard over there, and then the the, the fence. I mean, look, that fence looks new. Um, yeah. If you look down that I, right is, field, do we know for sure? Is that Fiscaline? Do we know that for sure in that photo? Yes, definitely. Oh, yeah. Okay, definitely. Cool. Right actually, on. it was yeah. actually it's listed as a Paris, uh, Paris uh, like field or something like that. It's actually, okay. I think the whole, whole area, and then this is oh, Fiscaline. Yeah, yeah. Field. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, there's uh, a whole like thing going over there. So you can actually, you can, yeah, you can actually uh, see the scoreboard and that that oh fence right there. But okay, are you ready for this? Uh, so this this is definitely the oh parking lot that we are in. Oh, that's There's, definitely the parking lot. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so get Absolutely. this. Are you are you ready for the crazy thing about these last two pictures we we just saw? Yes. Those last two pictures were shot on April seventeenth, nineteen eighty eight. Oh wow! Yesterday to the day. Wow. wow. Isn't that crazy? That's, that's, that's insane, fantastic. Man. So he had just started there. Oh, wow. He was just barely starting with them. Because usually the minor, usually minor league stadium season start like about a week after the major league season. Wow. Look, yeah. how, oh, look how happy. Look how happy and young this guy is. That's oh that's that's so good. Great job. Great job finding that, Michael. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I just happened to uh, look up because I wanted to I wanted to get him in the spirit jersey, and then I saw yes. some black and white photos, and then I saw these uh, like color ones. I'm like, whoa, this is amazing, and they're really great photos. Yeah, um, yeah that, it, he, but that field yeah. been around for a while, and and I think uh, Sam, the spirit team left uh, around 2000 or so, and they ended up going to the field now that's on the other side of town, <laughs> and this field since then has been used for. Uh, Cal State, uh, Cal, Cal State University of San Bernardino. So that's what we saw that day, the Coyotes, and they were hosting yeah. a team called, we said Monterey Bay. I'm like, what's Monterey Bay? So it's the Cal State University Monterey Bay Otters. You guys see the <laughs> Otters against the Coyotes. Love it. And these teams are actually apparently, for their level of college baseball, they're both top 20 teams. So yeah, good for them. It was fun. Yeah. And, and, and we was, saw, it, was it was a good baseball. We saw an yeah, inning of it. So <laughs> we literally saw an inning. The thing like, I wish oh. you would have, the thing Jack would have appreciated was it was the dugouts. Yes. Like literally, I I don't think you got photos of the dugouts. Did you, Michael, in the background no, of your photos? I shouldn't have. Yeah, it looked like they put, literally put like, like what roofing shingles or something yeah, like that on top of the dugout. Oh, it I love so it. Hot. It is. It is. And it's, it was the, so the, hot. Like. The whole team was out of the dugout, just standing uh, over the arms over the rail. Even though it wasn't like uncomfortably hot, I imagine in that dugout, it's twenty oh, degrees hotter than yeah. what it is up Just there. bacon in there. It, it's yeah. a, the, the dugout was made out of like cinder blocks, so I'm like, it was yeah. like an oven. <laughs> sure. It's really awful. <laughs> So then, and if, you, and if you don't insulate that properly, it it's like a it amplifies the humidity. 
Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, so, as, as if they needed more more adversity. Yeah. Right? As they were out. just sitting God. in there in an, in an Instapot, just oh, looking. Yeah. And then a double header, forget about it. Yeah. And, and so then then we went to, I, I have not been here. Kevin said that he's been here. Uh, this is Hangar 24. So it's literally, uh, like the name would suggest, it's uh, across the street from an airport. So Hangar uh, 24. And uh, they had... Um, a lot of uh, different type of airplane paraphernalia up there. There's a lot of the patches from the from the airborne divisions up there. Um, some really really good beer. Actually, you know, I've only had limited Hangar 24 because at uh, the stadium, which we'll show you in a, in a minute, mm-hmm. I, that's the only kind of variations I've had of their stuff. So that, this was kind of refreshing to see like their whole uh, tap list right here. And uh, we had uh, the X12, Kevin, was yes. it? Yes, um, which is funny. It must be so new. We couldn't even find it on tapped yet. <laughs> so it's just like, literally, we just have a photo. We took a photo of it on the board just we had some information on it. But it was just a really good hazy because we were just looking like, all right, we're ready to get We're ready to get what we like. We like to get good like IPA of some sort. We saw this hazy. Like, we haven't had this before because they have their staples you could find year-round, including the ballpark. Like, yeah, let's get yeah. this one. And, well, this is nice. This is such a nice yeah. beer. This was uh, really super good. Yeah, and yeah. again, a right, yeah, literally right street. across the street from, from the airport right there. And uh, I told Kevin, I said, we should have flown here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I don't know where we would fly it from. It would have completed my journey because I literally took like what? I took like a couple trains. I took like two trains and a, and a bus to come get to, to meet you up to drive out for this adventure. Right. And I will oh. add too with Anybody lives in the uh, Orchard area where I live. They uh, Hangar Twenty Four is location in Irvine, almost down by the John Wayne Airport. I might have the city wrong, but it's, it's by John Wayne Airport. Yes, yes. And uh, so we finally made it out to the Inland Empire Sixty Sixers. Uh, we actually have a video from last year. We did an interview with uh, with we'll uh, some the, yes, uh, yes, some of the staff there. At uh, they're great people. The Again, they have like good craft beer, and uh, the, the everything is super fun there. Uh, we 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 compared to some other uh, places that we've gone before. We would definitely go back here anytime. It's great baseball, good fun, and um, this is the X series we were talking about. So uh, what we found out was is it's kind of like their experimental series. So they actually had a cranberry. Um, uh, it was X-12. a cranberry like. Yeah, uh, X. It was actually it was X eight. I think it was the number for it. It right. was a different number because everyone's a different number. It was, I think this is the X eight, and it was like a cranberry. I think cranberry hazy. Is it cranberry hazy? Yes. I believe. Ooh, and I was like, oh, cranberry Cowboy hazy. Jack. How? Yeah, I think Cowboy Jack would be it. You'd be all in on this one. I was like, yeah, how oh, was man. it? It was fantastic. No, sorry. And, and yeah, we was were great. surprised. We're like, well, we could, we couldn't get this at their place, but we could get that it was here. not that. Yeah, we got the game. We couldn't huh. believe it. We figured everything we'd find. I thought everything there would be at the ballpark. So like, all right, well, we'll wait to see what we can find at the ballpark. Like, oh my God, yes. what a fun surprise that was. And then they have like this, uh, whenever they score, they sound the horn as it says on oh, there. Yeah. And, uh, so it's like this big, like, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. it's, it's pretty cool. It, 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 it's it's hilarious. When, when they scored, I didn't hear it right away. And, and we're sitting like, I, I'm not even like, Hey, sound the horn. And then I was going to hear, my like, good job guys. Thanks. <laughs> Keep on their toes. <laughs> Of the fun, you know. What what exactly is a 66er, if you don't mind me asking? It's more or less just named after Route 66. It's just a catchy name, you know. And even funnier, at one point, um, the the tie in with when the Angels became the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, Mm -hmm. their spot was we're the we're the Inland Empire 66ers of San Bernardino. Like they did that as a as a rib to play along with the joke, and I'm like, oh my god! But now there's Inland Empire 66ers. Route 66 is such a bit is a big cultural thing in that area, for sure. So they decided to play along with it, make everything car related. Like if you see, you saw like the wrench there. You saw the oh, guy the wrench because he's wrenching on a car. I get it. I get yeah, it. All yeah. Right. But you saw. The guy, I, didn't, yeah, I didn't know if like I thought in 1966 there was some kind of like. Union revolt where they had to beat the corporate overlords with uh, <laughs> with wrenches. I don't know. No, remember, I, remember that that McDonald's uh, that we saw literally on that street right there, uh, painted into the street is the yep. big Route sixty six. 
Got it. So it's like it, it's a lot. There's a lot of historical uh, oh, significance yeah, in that area, and they they definitely play it up for sure. Awesome. And oh, yeah. um, so it was a four to three uh, Inland Empire 66ers victory. Uh, I think they scored in the bottom of the eighth, and uh, yes. and uh, yeah. So it was definitely that was a fun time. But then we got this, and uh, I'm, I know I, it's. Uh, <laughs> See, Jack, I didn't want to show it to you. There's the autograph. I was uh, like, we're going to talk about this one. Because Jack, is Jack. Is so tell us about this, Kevin. So um, if you guys watched a couple weeks ago, um, when I went to Reno, I got this hat. And let's swap the hats real quick. Remember, we got, I got this hat. So this is Mr. Baseball. This is part of the Marvel series called the Veterans of the Diamond. So there's, I think, 96 minor league teams that have a Marvel artist making their own version of the team logo. So this is their mascot, Bernie, and this is their interpretation. That ours is one. And the coffee game's really cool. It's like, oh, it's an Orioles scheme, you know. And what's funny is that we asked two or three different people, I'm like, is that just supposed to be Bernie? Like, we're trying to find out more about this. And everyone's like, yeah, he, okay, yeah, it's Bernie. So I'm like, I saw Bernie. Like, I'm getting a photo of Bernie just to just to rip back. And I get the phone, and all of a sudden he's, like, looking at me going, waving his hand with the pen in his hand. I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, yeah, all right, sure. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> So, yeah, so, and Bernie was like, so, but when I started going back to minor league baseball for us having a long time, it was like 10 years ago in 2013. Cool, in, in Lenin, I have a friend of mine, and uh, Bernie was definitely, uh, definitely a definitely old, special place in my heart. And that 2013 team won the championship, so that was like a big thing, got me back into minor league baseball in 2013, right on. So, yeah. Yes. I don't approve the picture, but <laughs> I know you don't. <laughs> I know you don't. Yeah. Why do you think I, I did it, Jack? Just for you. Yeah. <laughs> Bernie, Bernie's definitely fun. So uh the night did not end there. We actually oh, there's no, a didn't. place over in Riverside that we went to. It's a really great little hidden spot. There's a lot there's a big food area and they have a place called Beer Farm. And we, we couldn't pass up a place called Beer Farm. <laughs> Yeah. So um, we definitely had one. This is actually the uh, Stone Cold uh, Double IPA. That's in, oh in hell yeah! Ooh. There you go. <laughs> yeah, a yeah. double ski. Yeah, yes. that this is new. They uh, this year they made a double IPA version of the of the of the the Broken Skull IPA by El Segundo Brewing, and whoo, this is good. I mean, I I mean, I was like, I'm ready to go to bed, but I'm like, I got this one. We also had a, a beer by a favorite of ours, Beachwood, called Hop Jitsu. It's it's a cool place in downtown Riverside. This uh, we've been there two or three times before. Yeah, yeah what? And uh, <laughs> this is one of our. This is like our spot. We're in Riverside. We're definitely gonna stop by there. And they're always really kind to us. You know, we saw people we knew from last time we went. Like, hey. yep, just socializing. Yep. And they usually have about fifteen beers on draft, all craft beers, some and seltzers, and they sell stuff to go as well. So definitely got yep. an overview for them. They're always really good yep. to us, and they have great stuff. We have some stuff for uh, coming up, some, bit, some oh, baseball Oh, yes. Beers. So we'll definitely oh. uh, make mention of that. Um, yep. The next day, we went to this uh, really great place. If you're ever in Riverside, there's a place called Tio's Tacos. And you have to go here. The food, the food is good. But the back area is a treasure trove of, you know, what they say, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. This, uh, yeah. The story of this is, uh, Kevin, do you want to tell the story about this? I, I, I don't even remember. So all this stuff, there's like this whole out, like an acre of everything that's made is all like recyclable products, like waste and just stuff this guy found, he made like art pieces of it. And I don't know, do you have any more photos to show an example of what? Like, look at that's on the rooftop. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, like, that's fantastic. And the, and this is a small example. There's rooms and rooms of this, like all the floor tiles, like everywhere you go, there's just stuff everywhere. And like, you know, yeah, there you go. Yeah, cheers, El Chavo. Yeah, all right, there we go. Okay, cheers, El Chavo. Well, only in Riverside, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it's. This, these pictures do not do it justice. You have to no. go there because it's like you can wander around this whole area and it's just like yeah. this all this homemade stuff, but it's made out of like basically bottles and cans and trash yeah. and and uh, they'll they'll take other things and make bigger statues out of it. Yeah. It's definitely one of those places that you have to go and just like literally take some time just to wander around. I mean, and the food's, yeah. the food's really good. Uh, definitely check it out. And uh, But also it's like- beers, dude, you want beer ski, you know, you got a Mexican beer. Oh, that's right, and that's right. Yeah. You can get a little Mexican beer, so you chill out, hang out, and just 
you know, don't take the beers with you. Just, you know, leave it inside. The beers stay inside, but just walk around. You can spend a good 20, 30 minutes just staring at everything and going, wow, it's pretty cool. Because, you know, yeah. it's really fun that this can exist where you have literally an acre behind a Mexican restaurant of all this stuff that's free just yes. to walk around and explore. Yeah, it's, oh, it's all free. Cool. You think it would be like somebody would charge and walk around, but it's, it's actually free. So that's Tio's Tacos. That was looking for like a donation box. I didn't even see that. <laughs> yeah, so that exactly. But then uh, I, Kevin had a, something to, uh, a concert to go to, so I dropped him off. Yeah. But of course, he found his way here. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I was on my way to downtown LA, and I'm like, you know what? Let's stop at one of the favorite breweries of the Baseball Brew Crew Highland Park Brewery right there in Chinatown. Because Michael dropped me off at a station in what's called the Gold Line. And the second to last stop is Chinatown. And five minutes away is Highland Park Brewery. And look what's back, Michael Mondragon, the baseball lager. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. Had to get one of those. I also had a, an IPA called the Pacific Breeze. But I was like, I got to get me a baseball lager. And it's just a beautiful place. Always have great beers. And if you go to Dodger game, if you're willing to make a little bit of a walk, you can just park there for free, get a couple of beer skis for, you know, what, half the cost at the most, like half easy. the cost, and then easy. just take a little walk, figure your way up there and get in there. By the by the time you walk over there and walk back, you wouldn't even be out of the ballpark, all right, if you were driving. So really? it's okay. worth the John. It's, it's, it's worth yeah. the John. Yeah, it's and, and friends of the show, Highland Park Brewery, stop Absolutely. in and let them know we say hello. Yes. Oh, yeah. And a fun thing too is Michael before when he went there got food there and on the num on the number player they had like a player baseball player on there I think it was Daryl Levens you said right Eleven, but all yes. if you get it every single player every single number for a food order there has a baseball player on it I saw like that's a go. nice little touch so they that do love their cool. baseball so we're definitely you know cheers to them yeah, so who cool. who what what game was it Kevin. Oh, I didn't or you know were going the game. to a concert? A concert. No, I was going. I was going to see a couple bands in uh, on the other side of L.A., but the Cubs Dodgers was going on down the street at Dodger Stadium. Got <laughs> it. Yeah, I mean, I was stumbling because I literally just didn't. Ha I just had to get to walk to a bus or a train and get home. Yeah. I was being responsible beer enthusiast, not an alcoholic. Thank you very much, All Kevin. Right. You, you are beautiful, man. I love you. <laughs> Just look at look at you just living your best life, man. That's oh, fantastic yeah. to see, dude. I oh, love yeah. it. So that is well, another adventure in hopping around. Uh, can we make it a fourth? I'm not sure. I don't think it'll happen. But I, don't, I don't think so. We got, the, we got we got our three year anniversary to celebrate yeah. next week. Yeah, that's true. We had a night. We had a nice run on this one. So let's right. finish out really quickly with some baseball oh, trivia. Right. Let's yeah. do it. So the number is 155. Uh, for this episode. So we're going to go with uh, that for the first question here. And question number what? one, this <laughs> Hall of Fame player only had 155 career hits. Wow. Who is he? Is it Hank O'Day, Dizzy Dean, John Smoltz, Pete Hill, Catfish Hunter, or Fergie Jenkins? Wow. That's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. What's the answer tough. from last week's? Whew. Yeah, that's yeah, not Smoltz. That's a red herring. You're trying to trick me. John Smoltz is too obvious last week. I should have picked it. I want to see what Dutch says because Dutch went 2 0 last week. If Dutch is still out there, you know. Whew, this is interesting. So this Hall of Fame player only had 155 oh, career oh, hits. Who is Dutch? Is, Dutch is calling out Catfish Hunter. All right. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, all right. I, th I think I think I'm gonna take this one home tonight, boys. <laughs> Coming all in right. Yeah. Reggie oh. Jenkins. He's probably the most active on social media, Fergie Jenkins. Oh yeah, Fergie's a great follow if you if you have if you have uh, you know Twitter, definitely follow Fergie. There go. I'm going with Jenkins as well. Huh. Well, I was gonna go with my lovely lady lumps, Fergie Jenkins himself. <laughs> oh, look at this! Nice, Kevin. Who do you got? This is this is so hard. All right. You know what, Cowboy Jack Durango? Yes, sir. I'm going to go with the red Harry. I'm going to go John Smoltz. Ooh. 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 
likes to he likes to dine on danger, ladies and no, gentlemen. No, it's snack on danger, dine on death. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, that was more Vince McMahon than Hawk. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is Hank it is actually Ooh. Hank O'Day. As a player, he only hit 190, oh. hit 155 hits, one home run, 46 RBIs. As a pitcher, uh, potentially even worse, 73 and 110. Uh, you, you, you sneaky, but, you sneaky man, you. That was Hall of Fame as an umpire. And if you look at his nickname, his nickname was the Reverend. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> the, the, the wording of the question. That you got us. Well done. Yep. Yes. Yes. And if I'm not mistaken, because this this was a, a, you might want to look it up real quick. I believe John Smoltz has 155 career losses. He has 154 saves and 155 <laughs> career losses. So I'm like, wait a second, why is he coming up in my in my figures again with one? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, do well, I we, know the ne- we know it's not the next question, right? It's not, it's definitely, it's definitely I know, I'm not. kidding. Pitcher John Smoltz played 21 seasons for three teams, yep. 213 yep, 13, wins, 155 losses. How many yep. saves? 154? Oh, that was How last week. Yes. How many career? I already closed it, but that we know that. We already yeah. knew that. But look at Hank <laughs> O'Day. Like, no wonder he was 73, wow. 110. Look at that One, wind up. 100, <laughs> 150, 154 saves. There you go. Yeah. So if anybody but, yeah, ever asks he, you, I think even Jack, I think even Cowboy Jack ended a ball off this guy. Look at the way he's like. <laughs> hey, we played ball before. I, I, I could, I could smack one. <laughs> off this guy, if, even if, I, if, I think. If I think, you, know, if I you can convince me to put my beer down and my cigar down, I can hit a ball. Right. <laughs> I know. Barefoot, by the way. Bare Barefoot. Boys. Yes, Barefoot. of course. That's his trademark. Yeah. All right. Question number two. <laughs> question number two. Hello. Hey, oh. This player oh. was the first to hit three home runs in a game at Dodgers Stadium. Who is he? Is it Mike Piazza, Duke Snyder, Sean Green, Willie Stargell, Adrian Gonzalez, or Dave Kingman? <laughs> I hope that's what I think it is. I really, really hope I think I, I hope I, I hope I, I hope that's what I think it is. Oh, I hope I ran this. Oh, Who do you have in the chat? Oh, I hope I'm right on this. It's first cool. player to hit three home runs at Dodger Stadium. Actually, I think I really do know it, and it's not who I want it to be. If sports card going with King Kong, Dave King Kong. Kong, yeah, Parabellum going with Mike Piazza, Dutch going with Sean Green. I like it. We have a lot of different answers here. Yeah. All right, good, 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 good. good. First player to ever hit three home runs in a game at Dodger Stadium. Cowboy Jack Durango, who do you got? I'm going with the Sky King, King Kong Dave yes. Kingman, baby. <laughs> yes. Personal favorite of mine. Okay. Of course. And you know, Michael Mondragon, yes. I really wish that was the answer. And the first time it has been that infamous night. When you're done tonight, look up, go to YouTube, look up Tommy Lasorda. Dave Kingman, all right, and just just watch the glorious because Dave Kingman had an amazing game, and a guy had the nerve to ask Tommy Lasorda, "What do you think of Kingman's performance?" Where yes. Kingman hit like three home he, runs. He hit three home runs at, at Dodger Stadium. But the winner is the man on this entire list who is not a Dodger. It's Willie Stargell. Nicely done. Wow, yeah. nailed it. Nineteen sixty-five. For those of you who do not know, Willie Stargell destroyed Dodger Stadium. So the fact that he hit three home runs there, this this was a, a monstrous feat uh, by any baseball terms. But get this. He actually has oh, yeah. a plaque uh, <laughs> yep. at Dodger Stadium for this. He hit one 507 feet 
And uh, I remember when the outfield, um, behind the outfield uh, in the pavilion, they they had this. Um, they had this right here. Wow. I have no, I think that now it's up on the roof and slanted uh, it's like because they've, okay. they've since renovated, but I took a picture of this. There's another one of Mark McGuire. That's like, um, it's like 488 or something like that, but there's other, other one in, uh, so this Lux is still the record right on. It's still the record. And the, the other one is, I think Mike Piazza hit one like 496 or something like that Jeez. on the other side. So they have like these, but, how about this? He hit one 507 feet, right? In yep. 69. Yeah. That wasn't even the furthest one he's hit. Oh my God. <laughs> he hit one 535 at Olympic Stadium. Oh, wow. In 78. Woo. Yeah, so he's really underrated in, in baseball history because he is a Hall of Famer, but I think he only had like he only had like 430 home runs or something like mm -hmm. that. I don't think yeah, something like that. I've looked there's my Rain Man memory coming through. Let me see how. Let me test my Rain Man memory. Let's see how many home runs Willie Stargell had. Yeah, Let's he see. he he destroyed during that time, and he was like one of those. Just Four, like, okay, four seventy five. He had more than I remember, but not not quite five hundred. But dude, still, that's that's two hundred and thirty five feet more than a football field. <laughs> like, yeah, there you go. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. Nice Yikers. That is. Yeah. Yeah, he was oh, he yeah. was something else. Definitely, definitely one of those unappreciated players of uh, of today. But but like man, he was just uh, oh my gosh, yes, yeah, he's right. The flip of the wrist, yeah. yeah, yeah. He he just had just like a perfect swing. It was just like this flick it right out. It was in, insane. Um, but yeah, Kevin it, Kevin can't walk five hundred and thirty five feet <laughs> without stopping five times for beer. <laughs> bravo, bravo. <laughs> Well, he always hits his head on a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Literally and figuratively. Um, <laughs> oh All right. So that is the show we have for you this week. A another a jam-packed. Uh, please uh, watch Rip and Review. It's every Saturday at 6 a.m. Pacific. Uh, this week will be 2022 Dops uh, Tops. The Dops. Did I say Dops? Top Dops. Stadium Club Chrome. Uh, Angela opens up a blaster box of that. Here's where we are on all the socials. Follow them. We put a whole bunch of stuff on there. We always have a lot of fun. So definitely uh, check all those out. Guys, any last words before we sign off for tonight? Definitely check out Rip and Review with Angelo Trinidad every Saturday. It is a great, great card rip show. Uh, it's gotten me into watching uh, card openings, which I never thought I would do. But he he suckered me in, dude. He got me. He does a great job there. And hopefully he'll be back with us soon next week. It is our big anniversary show, so don't miss it. And anybody in the sound of my voice, we're all going through it. If you're having a hard time, reach out to me. Confirmed Desperado on Instagram. Confirmed Outlaw on Twitter. Hit me up. You're not. You don't have to go through it alone. Uh, do something kind for somebody. Just do a random act of kindness between now and next week, and spread some love. And thank you for joining us. Awesome, Kevin. All right. Then you know what? You did that part. Let me do a different kind of praising. Pay it forward. You know. In the world for Jerry Lee Lewis has left this world. Let's keep the Jerry Lee Lewis telethon alive. Let's try to get 500 subscribers so that way Jack can do a shoey. That's, that's I like it. Reason. I like it. I want that. Absolutely. And hey, Michael Mondagan, we have a very important thing in your life happening this week. Why don't you talk about that? Oh, your, your son, uh, sir. yeah. It's, well, <laughs> yeah, 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 turns 21 tomorrow. My my son turns 21 Woo! tomorrow. So. We might we might have a new member on the baseball brew crew. Uh, uh, thank you, David. Yes, thank you so much. And Dutch, thank you so much for all your uh, putting all your good vibes out there and uh, for everybody and getting everybody hyped up. We appreciate it. Yes, uh, uh, happy birthday to my my son Jonathan. And uh, yes, he will definitely yeah. enjoy a craft beer and he'll be out on some adventures with us as well. Um, Yes, big show next week, three years straight. I can't believe it. It is uh, absolutely outstanding, and uh, it's kind of surreal, and uh, hopefully it'll be four years straight. Yeah, what's up, Jack? We are 15 subscribers away from 500. Can you get the word out to your people 
and get 15 subscribers for us on our third anniversary show. We come to you free live every week. Just get us 15 more people and I'll do a shoey live on the show. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Um, yes. Ian, that get the word out, brother. Ian, get the word out. Thank you. And uh, uh, I also want to make mention of my, my burrito hat. Uh, oh, yeah. It's excellent. And the thing that I love about it is also it has like a silver, like the so the tin foil uh, on the burrito. That, that's a nice touch. Thank uh, you, Shelly. Thank you, Shelly. We just got another oh, subscriber. Man. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, Shelly. Thank, thank you, you Shelly. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Uh, awesome. I, thank you so much. Overwhelmed. How are you not uh, subscribed already, Shelly? We're good. <laughs> <laughs> we All just right, have to twist people's arms, but we appreciate it. We appreciate it. It, it definitely helps. Uh, we'll see you next Tuesday with another baseball brew crew podcast. Good night, everyone. Take care. That's right.